Hey, Andrew Chelman here with MachineSkills.com. If you find this tutorial useful, there are plenty more like it on MachineSkills.com as well as our YouTube channel, so make sure to stay in touch. In this video, I'll be going over automation in Machine 2. Now, if you're not familiar with automation, it is a process that allows you to record changes to effects and other parameters. Those changes will play back in real time. So um, it's a very nice way to get some dynamic control over all sorts of parameters in machine. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is record a filter sweep on my drum group. So my drums are located in group A up here, and I'm going to go to my group level here and then select a filter from the effects list. And once we have that loaded, I'm going to change it to low pass and then increase the cutoff frequency to the maximum amount. And right now we won't be able to hear anything just because that cutoff frequency is all the way up. What I like to do is have the filter sort of come in at the beginning and then fade out at the end of this pattern. So if I turn the knob, I can maybe get an idea of what I want to record. Now when I want to record that, all I have to do is do the exact same motions with the knob, but instead of selecting the actual knob itself, I'm going to select this outer ring and then play it back and then move it in the desired fashion. So just like that, we've already recorded some automation, and you can see that the software reflects some of the changes that happen. Um, down here in the automation lane, we can see the visual representation of what we just recorded. If you're not seeing this, make sure to select the icon down here, and then as well as the parameter that we were just working with, so in this case, the cutoff frequency. Also, you can see this outer ring on your parameter move in accordance to the um, automation that we recorded. So that's another way just to understand visually what's actually happening. Now as another note, this automation is recorded relative to the initial value. Now in this case, I recorded my filter sweep starting at 12.5 kHz, but if I move that down, say around 2, that's going to record the same pattern here, but it's going to play back from that lower initial value, so we hear that. Now the filter goes really, really low down there. Um, but it's the same pattern as we had initially had. It's just starting at a different point. So in summary, automation is relative to your initial value, and at any point you can change that initial value to get a different sounding automation change. Once you have your automation recorded, you can change it a couple of ways. Down here using these three tools, you can use any of them to change your automation. If you want to draw it in manually, I recommend using the paintbrush tool here. Make sure this grid isn't selected if it's on like it is right now, try to draw anything in, it's going to be quantized to your grid setting. So turn that off will allow you to draw in a much smoother curve. Um, so that's just another way to have some control over your automation. You can also add more automation changes at any time. All I have to do is press this little plus icon here, right click and then select any parameter that is available to you at a time. And then just like that, you can go to your paintbrush tool, draw on the change, and everything will be just as you want it to sound. So there we go, that's my filter sweep on my drums. Um, if we move to the master bus here, I get some questions about automation on your master level. And unfortunately, you can't actually record this. So if I load up an effect here, you can see I can't grab this outside ring and there's no way to add any automation lanes for the master bus. So unfortunately at this time, machine does not allow this. However, if you go to the sound level, there's many creative things that we have control over. So if you have machine's internal sampler loaded up, say in a drum kit, any of the parameters for that can be changed. So if you want to work with the pitch bend, with the tune, or with any of the amplitude envelope parameters here, any of those can be automated just in the same way. So I'll just do that really quickly. If I select my hi-hat here, I can change the pitch of that as it plays. So that's a, a nice way to really have some creative effects going on your on your internal sampler. Um, and just like we did with the, the drum group, we have that filter sweep. You can do any filter sweep on um, any of your individual sounds. Um, here, if you go to the filter, you have some options to choose from, and you can grab the cutoff frequency and move it down, just like we did to get the same effect going. So um, that's nice. You don't even have to go into the effects chain and add a filter. You already have one on the sampler there. So I think that covers automation in the software. Now if you're working on the hardware, you can do the exact same thing. 
Right now, I'm working with Machine Studio, so to record automation, all I have to do is hold this auto button, and then turn the knob of my choice. So if I go back to my group here, I'm going to add an effect just really quickly in the software. I'll go back to my filter. Um, I can do a filter sweep just like we did earlier on in the video. So I'm just going to replay it, hold down the auto button, and then turn the knob. On the middle size machine hardware, you just have to do the same thing but holding down the auto right button. And on the machine micro, you have to hold down the shift button and then turn your um, your turn your encoder. So um, all three models allow you to record automation in real time from the hardware. Okay, so I think that about sums it up for automation on the software and hardware in machine. As always, if you have any questions, you can leave them below and I'll be making sure I answer those as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one.